So glad to have you. Much We're more familiar territory than I expected. Yes. And I know it's not exactly on the agenda, but I wanted to publicly um, recognize and thank Carl Rogers for his uh, wonderful and dedicated service as our interim during the period of time. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Carl. He's outstanding he's job. Even temperament. Carl's, yeah, imagine that. Carl's awesome, but it's hard to thank him when he's not actually leaving us. <laughs> it's not hard to think. I just want to keep them around. Okay. Yeah. But that's your deer hunting trip plan? That's what's important. The knee is feeling a lot better. The knee is doing much, much better. Yeah. That's great. Are the hunting trips planned already? November's just around the corner. Yes, I know. I saw my brother last week, and yes, he's making all kinds of plans. Uh, seasons, <laughs> seasons are earlier in Pennsylvania, too, isn't it? Um, the rifle season is later. Oh, it's later? The archery starts about the same time this year. I think they're starting a, a spear season soon. <laughs> <laughs> dart. <laughs> Poison dart. Oh, low dart season. Sure. Uh, okay. All right. This is a fun start for me. Didn't we just yeah. get them all like this? Consider additions or adjustments and approving agenda. Uh, any additions or adjustments to the agenda? I have a suggestion for you. Go, man, go. So we have as number 14 discussed whole harmless agreement potential executive session. Mm -hmm. I, you know, we always get to these executive sessions at about 10 o'clock. I don't know about the rest of you. But I'm tired and my mind doesn't work that well. I'd like to change the order um, in move item 14 up to after item 6, between item 6 and 7, and do, do that executive session while my brain is still okay. not like oatmeal. Okay. Oatmeal soda goes. Um. Yeah, we do it after eight. Yeah, yes. I don't. I don't care. My my only thought is doing it at a point in time where we still have some brain cells left. Deal. I think we're getting to this whole meeting in two hours. So. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let's, let's <laughs> okay. Any other additions or adjustments to the meeting? I have a couple other things, but I think I can bring them up on your select board oh. issues and concerns. Yeah, me too. Okay, good. Let's yeah. Go. Select board uh, reviewing invoices and orders. Any questions or anything worth bringing up to invoices and orders? I think there's something that I got to do some follow up on. But there what? are some invoices from Brossel Fuels, and I thought we were contracted with the Freds. Does it mean we're not going to pay the invoice? No. It doesn't mean that at all. Okay. Who are you following up with? I got to. Find the meeting minutes from eons ago. I think it was September last months. year. I think the reality that is that he delivered the fuel and it was <coughs> before the end of the fiscal year, so I signed it. Are yeah, I signed it. I signed it as well. Yeah. It was just a curiosity then. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's a good. That's a good pickup. Uh, consider approving August 21st and 28th meeting minutes. Motion to approve as presented. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Ayes have it. Donna's not here tonight, by the way. No, Donna's not here. She has a trustee, trustee meeting. meeting. Trustee meeting. Good. Um, Donna also will not be here on Wednesday night because she has a conflict then, too. So she'll watch recordings and take minutes. Um, 
select board issues and concerns. What, did, what have you got? Doug, can you want to kick us off? Um, you, you already mentioned fuel, so I guess you don't have to mention that one. Um, so these are just things that I, I don't want to lose track of that we've talked about in past meetings. And I, I don't know what the resolution is. So some of them, some of them we may be able to deal with tonight. Um, so we, we had talked at one recent meeting about drafting up a, a memo or a letter to Bert Nato, which would, he would basically say that he's okay with a deed codicil that says we can have a crusher in the, in the pet. I'm just looking to see if we've done any kind of follow-up on that. And if not, I want to keep it on the agenda because we should do that. We could deal with that quick then. Does anybody could conceptually disagree with it? No. So could we put that on your list, Thomas, maybe? Talk yeah. to Duncan and myself? Because we would have to approve it anyways, but And this is I mean, part of the reason I'm doing this is because, you know, we're doing a transition to Tom and yep. these are some things that I don't want to fall off our list and if he doesn't know about them. Cool. He can't <laughs> deal with them. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to put together a to-do, everything that happened in the meeting, I'm going to take these notes and put them to-do, and I'll probably email it to all five of you, and then that will be the opportunity to add things, subtract things, or even things that you, that you missed. It's it's directly to Tom, but Tom, don't let anyone pull one over on you and say, do something that wasn't in our meeting. Right, <laughs> uh, exactly. Yeah. Just, that's opening up a door you may not want. So to. don't be careful with Mark, very specifically. <laughs> Uh, the other one that I don't think has got any specific resolution, but I just I didn't want it to fall off our plates. That is the request of a citizen uh, regarding the intersection of Patch Road, um, being a T and versus a Y. Um, so I know Jason's thinking about that, but I just don't want it to fall off our plate. Um, this one, I don't know that we arrived at any specific uh, agreement on this, but um, we have our 911 road naming ordinance, which I'm referring to as an ordinance. Carl, I think, has some issues or questions as to whether or not he could find evidence of it actually having been adopted as an ordinance. Or the revision. The revision certainly was not because that was adopted as a policy. And my, my suggestion is it ought to be part of the ordinance. If it's not, it's going to get lost again. Yep. Um, so that's, okay. that's another one just to think about. Um, status of the interlocal agreement with uh, St. George. Is, is any action, is that moved further in any way, shape, or form? There's a copy there for Beth to sign tonight. Okay. St. George Board has signed it. Excellent. Beth Excellent. signs and we'll pass it on to Mike Park. Yep, she's already been authorized to sign it, so we're, yep. we're good. Okay. Where is that one? Super. Um, this one I'm not sure about either. Did, did we decide the status of either a DRB or a Board of Adjustment to hear appeals from the floodplain zoning regulation. I think my recollection is at one board meeting we had thought that that was important enough to shift off to Triple H and Fletcher and have them provide um, an opinion as to whether or not the DRB could or whether we could have a BOA and a DRB at the same time. Oh, uh, that's not been answered yet. Okay, so can we keep that one on yes. our on our bucket list? And that's probably going to be a good one for Tom. Um, um, Tim, the sound isn't on. So. Continue. And then the last one I've got is, um, and I really don't want to lose track of this one because it came up at the meeting with the Sterling Market. Um, it's uh, looking at our revolving loan fund and trying to get some idea whether or not the state might be willing to allow some modifications to our priorities and procedures um, and kind of open Sorry, up the applicability. Again, what was that for? What's that? Our revolving loan fund. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. 
And the reason I mention that as kind of urgent is it was mentioned at the at the meeting that we had with the Sterling Market folks um, that since we have a revolving loan fund, um, the expectation of the community agency of commerce and community development would be that they would expect us to loan some amount of money out of our fund to Sterling Market partners if we were going to be applying for any community development block grant money. Um, Do you know the balance on that fund? It's uh, just under 200000 About 180000 180000 That's it. So I not that. <laughs> There's a bunch more on the blades that will come out in future years. Why? I wait, just. What are you talking about? I just wanted to recognize that it was September 11th. Oh, you know, I wanted to make a motion that we have a moment of silence and we're just going to do it. We're just going to. You're stealing his thunder here. Look at yeah. he's all happy. You're well, I was going to bring up capital equipment reserve fund and all this other stuff, and he stole all my thunder with the good items. Now he's stealing. Capital the reserve day. fund. Okay. No, no, we can get to all that stuff in future meetings. Okay, you're talking future meetings. Okay. <clears throat> but 9/11, you would like a moment of silence. I was just recognizing that it was September 11th. Okay. That's it. I think it's appropriate. Make to, it away. We should. I think Maybe it's appropriate to, to take it. to have a moment of silence in in memory of nine nine eleven. Okay, we will take a moment. Uh, beginning now. Um, thank you for that. That's a great point. I'm um, so glad you said something, Evan, because I did actually have it. <coughs> I did too, but I forgot to. Um, Evan, do you have anything else for your Let's keep select moving. board issues and concerns? Anyone else? Select board issues and concerns? I already was. No, you can't say that. What's your issue? Well, I'm just concerned that I've got so many calls about the ditch. There are a lot of people on the pot road in places that are um, concerned that come winter, they're going to be on, this, on their roofs if they go off, if they go off the road. I don't know if you've seen the ditching on Flat Road. Yeah, I was up there last week, actually, and... Um, Somewhat aggressive. I, I talked to Jason this morning about it, um, and uh, he mentioned that once the grass seed grows in, that, that's a, that it actually always looks like that, but once there's vegetation in the ditch, it's much less intimidating. So it was your sense that they weren't too steep, the cuts? I was a little concerned myself that it's... It's not any different than uh, French Hill, which was done two years ago, or Maple Hill, Collinsville, which was done last year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, people complain when we rent a boom mower and we cut the right of way back, too. So I understand, but I, it's kind of a new... <coughs> Better practices. I, I'm just sharing that I've gotten a handful of phone calls. Understood. Um, I had the same feedback last year, and one of the things that I was told was that um, after the grading goes through, it widens it out a little bit more, so it is less intimidating also. Um, but I feel very differently about it this year than I felt about it last year, and my road was one of the roads that was done last year. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like your road is? I don't feel like, I don't feel concerned about it, frankly, yeah. You know, I'd just like to say too that I think that the ditching that they're doing, there may be some individual cases where it's a little deep, I, I would grant you, but in general I think they're following the standard for ditching that is prescribed by uh, V-trans and... Uh, MRDP. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm personally not complaining yeah. because I think that we survived the flood on our back roads really well. Yep. And some of that was this ditch. Some of that yeah. is exactly that. So, yeah. I'm, but I'm just letting you know that. Yep. I 
prepared the same thing. <clears throat> okay. Um, thanks for all of you sharing your thoughts and what you're hearing out in the world. Um, so we're ready to move on. Thanks for that. Yes, we are. Uh, consider approving bills, warrants, licenses, and other actions. Looks like we have a catering permit for is, Sodexo. Is Susan filling these out or Rosemary? Uh, and so these things are coming now um, through the, from the state. All that uh, Rosemary receives is an email. Everything is done through the DLC portal. So there's nothing for you to sign like you used to do. Um, and from the information that was in the email, I pulled stuff out and put in your agenda book so you know who's licensed and what license to approve. Motion to approve Sodexo Vermont Inc.'s permit application number 31800 uh, for an event on September 16th from noon to 6 p.m. Sending the standard letter. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Is that too late for you, Doctor? My discussion. No, no, I'm good. I, I was, I was going to suggest that we do <clears throat> all four of them. But. Crap. Okay. Well, we already have a motion. So, um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Guys, have it. Next up. Uh, motion to approve. River Valley Stores. Tobacco license application number three one two two one. Where are you getting the numbers? The, the packet. Carl's report. Are you going to do them one at a time? Is that your plan? Yeah, I have a question about the last one. <coughs> um, we have a motion to do a second. 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 All those in, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Have it. Motion to approve THC Sisters Tobacco License Number three one six zero eight. Second. Favor? Aye. 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 What's a are you gonna vote? Wait, are you gonna vote? I said aye. What's a tobacco substitute endorsement? If I'm vaping? Yeah, I was gonna say it's I'm pretty sure it's the vape. So are we endorsing it? Because it's, no, it's, it's an, an endorsement to the tobacco license. Yeah. It's okay. just like an addition. So you understand why I was confused, maybe. Because yeah. I'm stupid. Motion to approve that one, too. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Okay. Consider approval of any planned purchases. Are there any? Additional Zoom licenses, which doesn't really fall That's anywhere. Not really but we should just talk about it real quick and the cleaning um, for the Johnson Library heating ducts. Can I just say on these orders, can we ask that they be, maybe this was Evan, it's very it possible. Was uh, can we just ask that they be stapled or clipped together in some way? Because I have this random page ooh, 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 ooh. and I don't know where it goes. <laughs> Evan knows. Where's the two or three pages? That's uh, my point. That one? That's, of that's, seven, one, of, seven. that's one, two of seven. Three, yeah, okay. And Literally everything else. Is that with it? No, that's not the same backup. You're going to find that the total of all of this and the total of this equal the total on those seven pages. Okay, I still have the same request. Because they aren't really like, well, like blindly signing. Agree. No. And this one doesn't. Yeah, that one doesn't say two of. Doesn't say one of, two of three or one of three. So how do I know? You know what I mean, jelly bean. But anyway, okay. I'm not a real jelly bean. With regard to the orders and whatnot, does maybe this is Carl and or Tom? Question. <laughs> Do we, recognizing that Rosemary is out, um, have she and Susan talked about, uh, I think it would really be nice to have a treasurer's report, um, you know, as part of our packet, um, either a written report or an in-person report. Have, has, have they talked about how they might be able to accomplish that? I mentioned to Susan to talk to Rosemary about getting something. Okay. 
And the other thing I'd really like to see sometime relatively soon, again, understanding that Rosemary is out and that puts a real crimp of things. Um, we are now in uh, September. Um, the fiscal year ended July 1st. I, I would really like to see some sort of a report as to where we are. So yeah, I've, asked Carl, I've asked Carl last week to ask about it too for this meeting. Hopefully we can get it for next meeting. Yeah. Because we're at a point where we need that information. No, well, I, we just approved, and I'm not saying Carl didn't do it because I think well, obviously. Well, we just approved the invoices from uh, March, April, and May that are off of last year's fiscal or end of year. We'll change it by twenty thousand dollars from what it was more. Yeah. But we should be able to to hook those back to fiscal year yeah. 23, right. though. Right. And yeah. The year on surplus will be a long conversation in about a month and a half. Well, it will, um, but I think we, you know, I'd, I'd really like to get some idea of where we are now. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> I'm actually really concerned with where we are now for both this and for How cost. many digits are in parentheses? Right? You know, right, exactly. I think last year won't be in parentheses. And how do we know, like, we gave approval for a line of credit in the event we need it. How do, will we know if and when we need it? For this year, well, I don't have direct experience with that. But from what I've heard of the building, the village trustees, you know, they need that. And it's, I think what I've heard is that the village trustees, um, I'll say they approved it. Rosemary is using it, and I think maybe Eric is just reporting to the trustees where that stands. Approved what? Um, there, where they are. I'll spend on the letter of credit. Well, we approved one too, right? Yeah. We haven't used it. A little bit smaller. No. Well, not, no. We, and we don't know that we need to yet, but we don't know that we need to or not. That's right. part of the issue. We don't know what we don't know. Yeah. That's why it would be nice to see that the year in surplus the year in. But I don't well, believe we that we can use that. What? It would be nice to know what it is, yeah. Oh, I agree. What did you just say? We can't use that for expenses. The line of credit? You're in surplus for the uh, yeah, yeah, right. The taxpayer's money. Okay. Um, yep. So we all agree we definitely need that information. Um, additional Zoom license to get us back on track. Uh, this doesn't fall under our procurement fall. I mean, it falls underneath the amount, but I would say one more Zoom license I'm supportive of. I assume the village can pick up half the tab. Okay. Um, We're each sharing 50-50 right now. Items like tonight, it'd be nice if they had a Zoom and we had a Zoom. And let's try that for a couple months. How much does the additional license cost? Yeah, it's $150 for the year, I think. More than your monthly select board salary? No, for the year. I'm pretty sure it's for the year. Yeah, one for the year. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. So you think just one more? Um, yeah, I was questioning whether we need, we need one or two, because uh, we do have a bunch of committees that are starting to meet again, one of which is meeting tonight, by the way, using my personal account, which I'm not going to continue paying for. I pay for it right now, but that won't last for very Is there long. any license that allows for multiple meetings at, at the same by, time? Yeah, if we buy each additional license allows for additional meetings, unless you want an enterprise, which is too expensive. We don't want enterprise, and we just basically need to pay the extra 150 a year for each additional license, based on the number of occurrences we want to be simultaneous. Speaking of committees, I don't think that it's required that they have a Zoom. They don't have a place to meet. That's where I was going. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, there is space in other buildings that the town owns. Maybe we could arrange for meetings to be in for the time being. So is uh, the ask for, you're talking very specifically about Holcomb House and the library, I assume? The library is not in great shape, but we could ask. No, the library, sorry, the temporary library, I didn't Yeah, we can pass those two specifically. 
I mean, the local house is owned by the taxpayers of the town. It's a committee of the town. I don't see why they can't meet there. Could we also consider, I know Carl has talked about this in the past, of trying to set up some sort of interim or temporary meeting space in the, in the town offices. Yeah. Trustees are meeting there tonight. The thing is that wherever we are, it needs to allow for public participation. One thing that's interesting about the town office space is it's kind of set up in reverse. So if you kind of walk into the back, um, and that it's not very conducive to meeting, but if we kind of turned it around so that first little room you walked in was kind of where you had like reception and you would pay bills and receive information and then had as you move further back like where administration and then in the middle could be like a meeting space but it feels like now you're like walking into the back of people it's like not very and it are feels you talking about the way the office is set up right now on the second floor yes yeah, yeah exactly but it seems you like we could we're reopen the front door and have people go up the stairs and enter that way oh i see yeah yeah, yeah. because the technically if they i mean right now technically the office is closed yeah got it uh, we That's talked about that duncan um but even if we lock the door from the the lobby into where the offices were. If somebody walks in the front door, they can just crawl under the um, <laughs> wall where the sheetrock is. Where the bathroom is. And there's nobody there. No, not the bathroom, there. just the front. Just right in the front. They the whole, right all of the walls. You any can wall. Walk, you can walk wall. on the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, my my big concern with opening it up is the value of the vault. But I don't think that <clears throat> Maybe we can make some sort of special condition, but if you're opening up the second story, the elevator needs to be open for people with disabilities to access the office. Which means you have to open Which the front door. Which means you are opening into that, at least that, whatever you want to call it, interstitiary space, the weird hallway. I don't know why it's the size it is, but yeah. so we could, I guess it wouldn't be too expensive. We could. Have Mark slap some sheet rock up on the in-between wall. I've got a couple extra twelve foot pieces. <laughs> this is also falling together. Okay, so yeah. This is off the topic of zoom lists. Can we can we have um, well, it's Thomas a... and, and Carl and whoever <clears throat> think about that and come back to us with a proposal on Yep, next agenda item that falls well into this flood of items. So yeah. Let's do it. I'm cool with that. Okay. So one more. So the follow-up for flood items for next week is about other buildings, non-municipal options for public meeting, and two. And Dean, if you have a suggestion for that, if you want to connect with those two. Yeah. Yeah. About the whole meeting space. And, uh, like Casey reached out, and she's been having her skate park meetings at Jenna's Promise, and they allowed her to go in there and use their their actual space once they closed down the restaurant. Maybe we use that now twice. And the Conservation Commission, we just, we meet outdoors at the, at the Welcome Center, right, in Old Mill Park, where the, where the, where the picnic tables and everything are. So, yeah. so we, several committees have been able to find some spaces uh, around if you're creative enough. I think there's even so more. So I wanted to stop this conversation, though. Do you have anything else that is important about uh, this? About this, no. It was about a comment that you made. Because you're talking about follow up for flood. I thought next week was specifically doing a catalog. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is. It is. You're right. Sorry. You're right. So it happened <coughs> at our following meeting. <coughs> yep. You're right. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks, Dean, for those suggestions. Yeah. For Zoom licenses, it sounds like, just go, like we should just go ahead with one anyway and two. Maybe if demand, if there's demand for. Should we revisit in a couple months? Yeah, we can revisit it based on the demand. <coughs> yeah. Do we need a motion on that? Uh, I don't think so. It's below our threshold. Below the threshold. Yeah. Um, cleaning Johnson Library heating ducts. Motion to approve. $1,200. Um, library building duct cleaning proposal from Brussels Fuels. Second. Any that discussion? 
that meets all of the FEMA reimbursement requirements because he is a normal vendor of theirs. Yes. Um, we're using the invoices. Um, we can show that that's the case. Okay. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Discussion about kennel servicing service for animal control officers use. Uh, so there isn't one right now, correct? Yes. Currently, the the kennel that we use forever, um, they decided to uh, basically end all uh, services with the ACOs in the whole area. So uh, we, Hyde Park and uh, Cambridge, uh, uh, Cambridge Jeffersonville, uh, we had a meeting. Um, last week trying to <coughs> talk amongst ourselves and figure out you know what is our plan going to be um, because we have to have kind of a sort <coughs> of an immediate plan and then a long-term plan uh, on the basis of um, we need a place to put a dog tomorrow. <coughs> right now I have a dog that's been housed at Crystal's house because the kennel when they decided to basically stop any um, <coughs> acceptance of our animal and they had her come over and take the animal out of their care um, she's been housing the animal herself at her home that she are they allowed had, to do that they basically because the whole system is overloaded right now as in the humane humane system um, NCAL refused the dog because they came over and did a test. NCAL only wants to take animals that they can easily place with very little, very little issues. Yeah. Um, they don't want to take a dog or any animal that's going to have a hard time in their kennel. So um, after that specific dog failed their test, um, we reached out to Justice for Dogs, which is our secondary. Um, that we've used before, um, and they were full. And then they also said, well, how did the dog do at the NCAL test? And they were like, well, the, the dog failed the NCAL test. Um, uh, they did a stress test where they um, used a fake dog and kind of put it into the dog's face, and the dog reacted in a negative way. So they were, and so then the kennel, the kennel was going through, I was talking to them, and they were in the they were in the midst of really kind of tightening down on what and making a lot of requirements of what we were going to have to do as ACOs. Uh, like Crystal had to give the dog. They insisted on Crystal giving the dog flea treatment before they would bring the dog in, let the dog in. Um, the direction that they want to go is more boarding than ACO. They've seen a lot of uptake uptick of people like surrendering dogs. And they were feeling like that was a totally different scenario than a dog found on the road. And I said, well, a surrendered dog is, you know, 20 minutes from being the one that I found down the road. <coughs> um, but they, so that was their direction. This is a very unique situation as, as far as I've been ACO. Um, and long time has Jeff, who was the original owner, was the one that we've worked with for years. Do you know why they're shutting down? They're not shutting, shutting down, they're them. shutting down us. Why? They're, okay, do you know why though? Is there because system? they no longer want to take in any animals from an ACO because they feel that that is too much of a risk for them. But there's not like a specific incident that occurred or something that happened with one of our towns is what I'm asking. All they said was because of the uptick of strays and relinquished dogs and, and they were afraid of any transference of things from an ACO brought in dog to their boarding dogs. They don't have an isolation area where they can, uh, you know, stop anything, transfer of distemper or fleas or whatever it may have you. And, and they were going to, that was their focus was that they just wanted to, they wanted to not deal with um, having to help out with placing the dog, they didn't want to, they, they, that was just their direction that they've been taking, uh, that they chose to take the kennel. So they gave us all a, 
a nice letter originally telling us they were only going to accept dogs until the end of um, uh, within a couple of weeks after they sent the letter. Um, but reality wise, you know, uh, all of us was like, well, why would we take, bring you a dog if now there's a, even a timeline? So they gave us a hard date of when they were going to just stop. So Hyde Park, us, and Cambridge and Jeffersonville are all in the same, same, uh, same situation. Um, they are exploring, um, uh, after that meeting, there was, a, there was talk about Stowe Police actually having a couple of kennels that they, uh, that may or may not be a suitable kind of situation. Um, for, I food talked, to, for food to take care of. For like an ACO to bring a dog down and they have a they would have a designated person that would be actually caretaking like the a dog. Kind of. It's a it's a shot in the dark. It's our best scenario would be you know another kennel just popping up and somebody willing to you know take on this kind of responsibility. Um, but the reality is that um, you know tomorrow I could get a call and I gotta have a place to house a dog. Um, what is the like collective? Is there something that the collective group of three towns is? Are you pushing? Is there a plan? Uh, yeah, is there a plan? <laughs> are you pushing out communication, or are you like what? Did, what is the ask? Um, the well, we talked about you know how each whether we were going to come up with the collective like answer to the solution and that's what uh, many people are including I am trying to uh, collaborate on on what that would look like how many kennels that would require uh, where would be you know an ideal location but still got to find uh, somebody willing to take that on and basically so you're basically you know. soliciting for somebody to yep. do this. we sent out a I talked to Carl and we sent out a front porch forum post uh, last week um, I didn't get any responses. Um, the other th the other scenario is either a collective thing, maybe a future answer, but we still have the immediate answer that we have to find an answer for. Um, and um, that we talked about in the meeting too, as well as kind of each town is going to have to come up with something, at least setting up one kennel somewhere, you know, on either town property or, or or what have you that can house an animal for an immediate kind of, you know, time frame. Um, the, the only things that we got that really hold us, the system is overtaxed with animals right now, so if it was a stray and I can't find the person, which is, you know, 50-50, you know, most of the time I can find who the owner is, sometimes it's a dumped off dog. If it's a dumped off dog, or you know, or I can't find an owner, and I got no ID, and I got if I got nothing, social media doesn't come up with it. Now we're in a situation now where we have a dog that, you know, maybe it might pass NCAL. If it doesn't, then we go to secondary, and that doesn't happen. Then we're in the scenario that we're in right now, where Crystal has had this dog and caretaking for this dog since the 24th. Uh, it's been it's been it's been several weeks. Um, so I uh, come to the board to share this information to let you guys know what's going on, but also kind of um, kind of let you know that we're trying to come up with two different answers to the same problem. But one of the answers is going to be solving uh, getting a kennel set up for uh, our ACOs to use uh, for, uh, for housing of an animal for a temporary basis. Um, and so, yeah. Mark. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, when you pick up an animal, it becomes our liability, right? It sure does. It becomes liability of the town. Do you have a chip scanner? Yep. Yeah, so we purchased those uh, about six months ago. Okay, that's all I need. Yeah, that has helped out um, about twice, um, which has actually kind of helped me kind of not even take the dog 
to to the kennel, mm -hmm. but two other times, um, technology is great, except if the person doesn't update it or if they wipe the chip. And one of them, they wiped the chip purposely and erased all their information all the way back to where they had adopted the dog from, and that was the only information on the chip. So the chips are great if the information is updated on them. But but it's a you know it's a way it's a way for us to try and try and quickly get the dog back to where it belongs. Well, group has a chip. Yeah. Well, I'll make sure. Of course he does. And You're a responsible pet owner. Goes back. Great story, Mark. Thank you for that. <laughs> well, <laughs> so you know how important. So I guess you're going to do some research and come back to us. I, it yeah. sounds to me like just reading between the lines, yeah. but the issue is the kennel we use is now a boarding facility and my guess is they want boarding fees that they weren't getting before. Yeah, we're, my paying, we're out paying fees. And at one point we had a contract. Do we, do we no longer have a contract? I couldn't, I couldn't find any sign of any contract uh, uh, with them. Uh, I've been, ever since I became ACO, I've just been dealing with Jeff and, you know, it, you know, Jeff was, he's been, he had been doing it forever, so it was yeah. just a totally different system. These are now new owners, and they want to, you know, take the kennel in a different direction, and so they've decided to no longer accept any dogs from any of the area ACOs. I just have to say that I think that's a bit irresponsible on their part to give such a short time frame. And leave towns in the lurch who have had a long term relationship um, with that kennel for that purpose. And, you know, they were well compensated. They, they received their, um, you know, their boarding, uh, their normal boarding fees. Um, now, there's, there's, I don't know if we can do anything in that regard. I, I would suggest that we should contact the new owners of the kennel and say, you know, we've, I don't know how many years it's been, but it's been, oh, God, you know, 30 years probably. I would say 40. Yeah. Um, so I just, I just think it's reprehensible that the new owners come in and give us 14 days to, you know, to, to <laughs> what? say you, you got to come up with a solution. You can't. How the hell are you supposed to come up with a solution? When they came over, weeks? came up with, when they took over the kennel, they had conversations with me, sent out an email through Rosemary about how they wanted the ACOs to do things, um, you know, augmented things a little differently, um, you know, than what we normally would do, which was always the, the following up, the, we were in, we were in charge of doing the connecting NCAL to come over, we were in charge of getting justice for dogs to come over, we were, in, we were, the ACO was, um, you know, part of that, but it fell right in line with our ordinances anyway, so, but it was something that Jeff also was in a part of, but they wanted us to, you know, step up and take that extra role. And that was fine, um, but, you know, honestly, with conversations that I had, um, they were getting very worried about, they were getting calls saying that, hey, I'm, you know, I'm going to just drop my dog off at your place and leave it there. Or they were, it, it got to a point where it was just kind of feels like it wasn't anything technically Johnson or either one of our entities. It was just a culmination of, uh, of dogs and issues that I guess they just decided to take the kennel in a different direction. And they didn't want to take the, you know, that kind of, I get that, but two yeah. weeks? It was, uh, yeah, the email came in and they gave us until technically it was almost to the end of this month, I do believe. So it was about three weeks notice of, yeah, of when, when it was going to be done. Yeah. That's, that's, in my opinion, that's, that's yeah. ridiculous. Given the, the length of the, of the period of time that we have had a relationship with that kennel. Um, yeah, but and, you know, Jeff to used to deal with that. That, that issue of them, you know, people threatening to drop dogs off. Jeff used to deal with that. I mean, that, that's, that's not a change. Well, that's not going to stop. <clears throat> like, frankly, that's not going to stop. What's that? That won't stop. 
this no, car yeah. will not stop that behavior. Right. Uh, and the other thing is, like, I really hope they're not bringing dogs in from out of state and not supporting our dogs here. Uh, that's my concern. But it's a private enterprise. They get to do what they want. They can do whatever they want. They, they, and they do. They and do. that's what they chose to do. Yeah, they yeah. just chose to um, go a different direction. New owner, different thing. On the on circling back, I have researched costs of purchasing one kennel to two kennels. Um, they vary, and it all depends on where that kennel is going to go. You can get three wall kennels; those are cheaper, about seven hundred to eight hundred dollars. You can get full four wall kennels that you can have inside or outside. Dean, what does this mean if we are housing this? Gonna put it. Where are you going to well, put it? Who's going to take Where are we going to put it? Who's going to take care of that dog? Twice twice a day. Not just the dog. Like we're talking about taking care of a dog, yeah. taking care of the property, yep. taking care of the poop, yep. buying food. Like, yep. There's yeah. lots yeah. of... Care and health care for the dog. The, but there's also, you know, I, I mean, it is what it is, but state ordinance is that every town has to have a place where a dog can go that an ACO uh, picks up. Well, we did. And we did, but now we don't. <laughs> so now we've got to come up with an answer. State law also prescribes that you only have to keep a dog for a certain amount of time, and then it can be just euthanized or disposed of. But I will, <clears throat> I will let you know with the past that I've been dealing with with multiple dogs, um, know that in the state we'll put down a dog that is healthy just because they can't get a placement for it. I, I dealt with that recently just with two other dogs and and uh, a woman that was actually <laughs> and was in an argument with her spouse and took the dog and was gonna they wanted it, she wanted to just <coughs> get it done. I have a dog, Crystal of the dog, that's Crystal's um, we were trying every scenario. I didn't want to put down the dog, uh, but I had to ask. And the Moyle Vets was like, there is no vet that's going to put down a healthy dog just because you can't find a place for it. And I said, but... Well, just because they said that stuck. doesn't mean it's actually true. It doesn't. But <laughs> it's, it means that our, but, that's, our, uh, that's what our local... That's what the vet says yeah. anyway. Um, I wonder, it seems to me like this needs just some more follow-up because I'm not comfortable with kenneling a dog on town property. Mm -hmm. Frankly, personally, I'm not one of the board of things, but I'm not comfortable with it. I don't um, love that Crystal has it at her house either. <laughs> well, that's the downside. Yeah, well, I mean, the best, the best scenario would be to find somebody that is willing to go <coughs> on this kind of uh, situation that we figure out how to reimburse them in an appropriate manner right. in their own property on their own space but then you know we also that you know at the same time I'm still stuck of you know if I get a if I get a call you know next week what do I what do I do yeah. and um, so I for, I said all that because I think that we should talk to the, both the league and the state to see what the state's recommendation is, because the state, I assume, has resources we don't have, maybe? Or we don't know if we don't ask, I guess. Um, yeah. It's like nobody can screw things up like the state, so let's ask. So let's ask. And uh, BLCT, uh, BLCT might have suggestions, too. What other towns do when this kind of situation arises? And, uh, Dean, maybe we could ask Rosemary to put something on that uh, clerk's list to serve. Yeah. So that, or you got it. I write that. Right. <laughs> um, Reach out to BMCTA. I don't have a suggestion yet, but I just want to make sure to mention this that um, since it is out of <laughs> the normal realm of uh, ACO duties, uh, I will be trying to put together a proposal for an appropriate reimbursement for Crystal for for housing that dog for the length of time that it takes. She is now personally trying to just connect with um, uh, rescue groups outside of the regular larger groups, basically, um, and then uh, and trying to find a placement for the dog. And that's where we're at right now. Just we're trying everything we can to. 
find this find this spot. But I just want to mention that to the board because uh, because I think eventually, once hopefully it ends, uh, we come up with a appropriate reimbursement. For that. <coughs> okay. Have you reached out to the um, the people who um, pick up do um, daycare? I mean, there's a couple of them in town that just come to your house, take the dog, bring it back. They have kids. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not. So that was a good segue into the point I was going to raise and ask the select board for suggestions like that. Or maybe you could talk with people, or maybe you can know somebody already that I was thinking like a dog breeder that might have the kennel space to do something like this on an intermittent basis, or like you're saying as a yeah. suggestion. Yeah, there's a daycare. couple. Doggy daycare people. Yeah. I think Brady and Johnson will find out how. There's one that goes by my house. Somebody knows two, three times a day. One on Red Tail. The dogs barking over there. All paws on board or something. I I would like to suggest that, um, if possible, I, I know Dean and, and the other ACOs are working on this, but I think it's probably going to take a a little higher level of um, effort. I'm not not saying anything against you, Dean, but but I, I think it's a high enough priority issue that we should we should involve Carl and Tom and Ron for Hyde Park or or whoever in Cambridge um, to try and come up with a solution. I think I think there there's an immediate concern that that Dean is referring to. It's what if it gets called tomorrow related yeah. with the dog, and then there's a longer term question of, you know, finding some sort of appropriate kennel situation for these, you know, these strays. And I'll just let you know that Ron actually was the one that was the key organizer for our ACO meeting uh, that I attended via Zoom uh, last last week. So he's he's very much in the in the loop of yeah. uh, what's going on. Jonathan is the Cambridge person. Would it be okay when I reach out to be LCD? I'm imagining a scenario where if all three boards came together and funded building five kennels and then advertising a business opportunity with a contract to all three towns for X number of years and then having VLCT provide guidance on the, um, the ability, uh, the subcontractor waiver of, uh, of employment, so, so to show that they're true. So, like any ACO from the three towns could offer a dog to this person at an X rate for X, but this contract with the town would go for three years, five years, and so it would kind of solve a long-term solution. It would provide economic growth to the to the area. I'm imagining like a farmer with a shed or a barn or somebody who has the opportunity. To, to fund this facility, but, if, but we'd almost need to, you need two things, right? You need the information campaign to say there's an opportunity for a business, and then you need the um, the guidance on how to protect all three towns from um, supporting that business. I'm open to any thoughts. I, I, yeah, I'm certainly open to something like that. I was going to ask Dean and I guess Tom if you're going to be working on this to have a more firm idea of what the costs would be in managing something like this, either for us to have just one emergency kennel available or for a, a grander proposal like that. Um, yes. If we could come up with an idea for the greater area, then whether it's in Cambridge or Hyde Park or Johnson doesn't matter, right? It just it solves the problem for everybody for a longer term. Yeah, it's basically fee for service, which, yeah. which is what we used to do with, you know, the other kennel. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah. So, I don't, it, it, you know, potentially it wouldn't necessarily cost a, a lot more. I don't know how much it paid historically. Yeah, that's a little enough. Well, there were if the dog got picked up, the person picking them up paid the kennel fees. They if they didn't have their shots, they paid for the shots. If they didn't have their license, they got it licensed before they could pick the dog up. There was. I don't know if that's still the way it's working. Kennel fee was fifteen to twenty dollars a day. They had to pay the the fee for the dog being picked up, which was a charge of. I think it was thirty-five or forty-five dollars, yeah. um, and then yes, they they have to. The issue that we always got into was 
got to get your rabies and shot in order to get your license. So oftentimes, talking with the owner, uh, I would have them call the vet. The vet would have to call me, verifying that they made an appointment, and I would let them pick up their dog because the dog would need the rabies shot before they can go get licensed and give them. And so our ordinance is they got seven, I think it's seven business days or whatever after notification to get their license. So yeah. So in a lot of cases, we were actually made whole if the dog got picked up. If it was truly a stray, then we absorbed the cost for, what, five or seven days? But then we got totally reimbursed. Yeah. yeah. And then it, then it went to North Country Animal League if yeah, they passed the test and yeah. all that good stuff. I mean, there were times when we got stuck with, with bills. But. Um, okay, so it sounds like different ideas will come out of whatever the research is. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, it's a new business opportunity for somebody. <laughs> that addition you're building would make a great. I know, I feel like it mm -hmm. has the space. Thousand dollars per dog per day would be taught. Uh, okay, thank you, Dean. Thank you. I think. You're welcome to stay. <laughs> oh, yeah. But we're going to actually We can do the annals really quick. I thought we were, no, we're not doing that. No. So we're going to go, okay, fine, what do you want to do? Aaron, and yeah. it's wide, what do you want? What Just because it's quick. Yeah, go for it. Go. I motion to approve the assessor's errors and omissions list. Dated September 5th, 2023, increasing the assessed value of parcel number 260-130 by $111,400. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Let's have it. Okay. Um, Carol, exactly. do you have the copy to sign? Yeah, so now we're going to discuss hold harmless agreement with the village for the hold harmless for an agreement with the village. Um, I think we do need to go into executive session for this because there are legal implications. I move that we enter executive session under the appropriate provision of 1BSA, which relates to uh, attorney-client privileged information. I think it's <clears throat> eight, three. Could be. You're the master of that these days. Well, <coughs> it's eight, eight, no, it's A1. You caught me with my guard down. Did you look up my phone? No, I don't care. I'll second it. It's A1, care. I'm pretty sure. Is that what you said, A1? Sure. I okay. said the appropriate provision of one VSA, and if that's the one, okay. we're good. It's a uh, client privilege. Was there a second? <coughs> yeah. Yeah. Seconded? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Did you say aye? I do. Yeah. Uh, as headed, we are in executive session at 7.36, we'll just go to pick up. Action. Salt. Um, salt. Consider approving quote from Winter Road Salt. Thoughts, anyone? I have a thought. No more salt. Ever. There you go. <laughs> um, I talked with a couple of people from the highway crew. We don't need what page is salt then? even uh, close to 600 ton. Three, four, four. Um, right, the 600 ton was on the form probably to cover maybe five. the town for when you did need to buy a full year, full winter's worth of salt at one time so that. Um, you wouldn't get in a situation where you exceeded the it's really form, you now. because after that, or they can bill you the market for Number 10. Gotcha. Because on a typical year, we're running like 250 to 300 ton, which is half of that, but that's fine. Um, I would like to motion to approve Compass Minerals price quote of $101.65 per ton. Can we get a, my reason being, um, it's better quality salt, there's less impurities that show up in it, and some of Cargill salt shows up wet, which means you're paying 
for water. And it freezes and pumps more. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? For clarity, I chose the more expensive one. I'm I'll second that. Okay, any discussion? We used to use cargo, and I can't even bear a truck again, right? I don't remember ever having any issues with their salt. I spoke to the person that runs our salt truck, and he said it's been better salt the last two years. Which I've been through a compass. Ten dollars a ton worth? Better? Well, yeah. It's a lot of money, but if it does show up wet, and you're paying for water weight, Ten dollars a ton versus dry matter, you might be getting the same amount of product in the end. Your tonnage might weigh out to the same volume. There's potential. Um, another thing that we could look at, I mean, is, is this meeting the state's spec for salt? Because there's a lot of different things in salt. I, I could sell the town salt for fifty dollars a ton if there wasn't much care on quality. Yeah, so, I don't know. I'm going I'm to have a hard time voting for ten dollars a ton more. Yeah, my my question was going to be: That's is fine. it, is it like ten percent of the salt that we're, or like you know, is, is the water weight going to make up ten percent of the salt that we're getting, or is it kind of a minor amount of water that we might get? I guess I would I have to. I can't really guarantee you exactly how much it would be. But yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know if it's going to consistently be at that kind of 10%, because that's, you know, we're looking at $10 and, a, and this, you know, it would have to be 10% of water weight, essentially, in order to make it. Which is not hard to get to. Um, Carl, you guys indicated that you, you had used Cargill and Barry. Did you, did you encounter issues or problems with your? No, um, I never heard the Public Works Department never mentioned any problems with getting supply or delivery from Cargill and um, never heard them mention anything about concern about the quality from the salt, either from Cargill or from American Box Salt, which came out of Dubois Construction when they were doing the salt distribution. Just for clarity, the $10 a ton does equate on an average year to about $2,700. You can run through that in fuel of man hours breaking up poor quality salt that's clumped. But I am just one hope, so we don't have to approve it. Well, unless I'm getting a mistake and the salt comes in on a flow boy, right? And they yep. back the flow boy into the trailer and are unloading it, so I don't know. There was, Jason mentioned that to me today that another advantage of, of Compass is that they do use a dump trailer, so there was a larger volume comes at one time, whereas Barrett uses 10 wheelers, and so there's more deliveries with Barrett, which means somebody has to take some time out to come go there in the salt shed with the loader and push the, the load up. Um, so more visits to the salt shed for pushing up with Barrett than with Compass. I don't know how much that means in the time and equipment charges for you. I'm not sure what they'd be during the day during the winter when salt's delivered and somebody needs to run in from across town or if they're right there in the garage and just pointing that out which is you know i'm inclined to trust eben's research on this a little bit and uh yeah now kind of thinking about the time needed to do the other thing it might be uh might be worth having less trips coming out Difference. 2700 I think Evan said? On an average year. And that's if we do the full 600 no, tons? Or? No. Average year we use between 2500 and 
300, or 250 and 300 tons. 600 tons is more than twice gotcha. on average year. But like Carl said, if you have a bad winter, if we were to only write this for 300 tons and we needed 320, they could really take the town to the cleaners for right. the extra 20. What right. did happen to Peachum uh, three years ago where the contract was with Cargill and then we had to buy, I think it was at that time like $75 a ton, and we had to switch to American rock salt to, to compensate, and it did jump to about 95. So it is a real concern that it, it's, a, it's worth putting the extra in now. So um, I'm not entirely clear on the salt. Does, is Compass also providing a quote that's based on 600 tons, and that price would be valid for up to 600 tons? Or is that just Carville? Um, Compass's quote is actually for 400 tons. 400 tons? Wow. And for clarity, we budgeted $38,000 for salts this year. And we switched to Compass last year, and it was less than our prior vendor cost. Two years cost. ago. Or two years ago, yeah. Just for reference, I don't know if we bought from then, but... We bought from Cargill before then. Um, if there's no second with the motion. We have the mark a second. second. Mark second. second. Is so it's yeah. a live motion. Don't that. Are we ready to vote? Sure. I know you are. Everybody else? I'm ready. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. Ayes have it. Um. I probably wouldn't have trusted Evan on that one. <laughs> You're so promising. I know you do your homework, but uh, consider approving energy procure procurement and broker agreement. Um, what is the so this is also part of our joint meeting discussion. What is the difference between tonight's discussion and a joint meeting? Is a joint meeting just giving the trustees the information? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Just to let them let them know that you have voted to approve this agreement so that then we inform for oil specifically right because you're buying the liquid fuels the heating oil and the diesel fuel so if you approve this tonight we can tell competitive energy services here's the sign agreement and they can start work on finding prices for you. Yeah. and that's basically what the trustees are looking for just the select board's action at this moment Okay. And um, this list that we've got here is, we're pretty sure this is a good, the quantities are good. Yeah, uh, back in June, uh, I went into the account, the invoices from the prior year to put that together. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, client representation slash energy procurement agreement with competitive energy services and authorize the town administrator to sign it. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Can you just name Carl, actually, since his name is on it, and we now have a town administrator? Um, sorry, should I name Carl? Carl as our authorized agent. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll authorize Carl instead of town administrator. Carl Rogers. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion? There's no point discussing. We already have the votes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I was sorry. I was being nitpicky, but no, that's no, it's just because. Yeah. Carl's done a good job of finding himself. Yeah, thank you for your work on that, Carl. Yeah, you're welcome. Carl's awesome. Uh, consider setting him out for form-based code permit application fee. Thousand bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Why stop there? And do we not? Are we, gonna have, are we going to have the form itself be a separate discussion? Yes. Um, 
Thomas and I talked about them today. I gave him a sample zoning permit form that I located and gave him a copy of this page Perfect. eight, and he's going to put together a draft of a permit application. I know it's kind of hard to guess about this before the form itself is created, but um, do you have an idea of how much time you would expect the administrative officer to spend on these? Once an application comes in? Yeah. Well, I think it would vary quite a bit based on the project. The one that's pending is quite simple. It's a modest sized building in a fairly large open space. So it's, it's the setbacks really aren't in question. But you could have some of these with the storefronts and going out and having to measure the window and um, the percentages overall that could be more involved. Um, so I could see maybe eight or 12 hours in some of these versus the one that's pending, which is like I said, fairly simple, a couple of hours at most. So your average is what, six hours, 300 bucks for the application? Uh, be about average, break, yeah. break even. <laughs> like I feel like an average would be more like three hours or something. Is like you're gonna have fewer so of the more complicated. I'm just thinking about waiting in. In the middle, well, is there, application. is there a reason to have a two-tiered structure then? One would, I, I don't know, a regular, you know, regular zoning fee schedule might have something that was X dollars for a single family, X dollars for a commercial, X dollars for an accessory permit. Would that have to be in the ordinance? And that's, I'm, I'm going to display my complete ignorance about the form-based code. I don't really know whether there's a logical I mean, there's breakdown like, it's not called neighborhoods, it's called zones. There's different zones. Three zones. You said different three regulations zones. according to zone. To be fair, there's been one application in five years. <laughs> so it's not. But we also had significant flood damage, so that could change. Got it. Yeah. And there were some things that maybe should have been applications that kind of flew under the radar. And yeah. <laughs> I have a suspicion on why we actually have a request right now. <laughs> it's because this person is very knowledgeable. Uh, yeah. But so to your point, like, oh, we're gonna see them. So what? Three hundred bucks. So the um, page that I gave you in your packet. Um, mentions the fee and it just says required applications fees as set by the select board also shall be submitted with each application. Yeah. That's in the ordinance the yeah. code right Yeah. <coughs> so it sounds like you could pretty much come up with a fee schedule as you think is best. Like multi tier system or just one flat rate. Can we just start with like 200 bucks, see how it goes? 200, why so much? I mean, if, you if guys there's... You're the zoning. I know. I do hate... But he also wants to bring in revenue right now. <laughs> no, I don't care about bringing in revenue at all. Um, if you average about four hours, it, our average cost for employee after benefits is around $50 an hour. Four times 50 is 200. It doesn't cost the taxpayers money. It broke even. Some taxpayer $200. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but they're building, and that's less than four sheets of three quarter inch Advantech. If they're really doing a project, $200 is not going to be a make or break point. Well, it's certainly not going to happen. I can create a lot of love either. Yeah, yeah, right. I would be open to it. I didn't I, know we were here for touchy feely about like light and zoning. I mean. If you want something different, propose it. But twenty-five dollars, you might as well do zero because it's costing the taxpayers money anyway. Twenty-five, and that is gives them the ability to actually complain, saying, "Why don't you charge anything?" Instead of saying, "Oh, well, we charge about half what we think it costs," so you're only picking up half the tab. How much is it for a regular building permit outside of the village? We don't have it. This much. Nothing. 
we, we have no idea what's being built or tore down or whatever in this town. Well, the form should be easy. It specifies all the things that should be in a form. I just don't have it. I like the idea of a multi-tier system um, because we do have different zones, I hesitate to call them, but um, having different fees for different zones makes sense to me. Um, I don't think we would want to charge a residential person the same as we charge a commercial person. But the um, thing is the zone isn't about I, yeah, whether you're not, residential or not, it's what about is the it? neighborhood. Neighborhood right? and what is the yeah, red line downtown, yeah. <laughs> I mean, normally it would be based on the type of structure that's being yeah. built. Would it ever be based on cost of estimated cost of project? If I'm doing a two million dollar some project, some of the could on that way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It could, it could be based on square footage of the building. Um, you know, there's you know, it could, be, it could be 25 cents a square foot. I'm pulling that number out of out of thin air, but. Um, I'm just looking at like what are some of the things referenced, and I'm just doing a skim, by the way. I have read this more thoroughly, but I can't recall all the details. A couple of things that are called out, though, is about the slope conditions, wetlands, water waterways, I guess this is in reference to, like, and existing utilities. Those are probably things that add complexity. Um, I don't see anything else that's about like specifics hmm. other than like you need to put this there kind of a thing. We're going to have to file one of these for the light industrial park. And this says that the recommended cost of appeal, oh. the recommended cost of appeal is $250. Hmm. For an appeal? For an appeal. What if, okay, so, again, I'm displaying my complete ignorance. Are there Maybe this will certain help. uses that require DRB approval as conditional uses, as opposed to an appeal of a action by the administrative officer? Call it back in. I hope so. It is, but I didn't. I don't recall that I'm seeing that in there. Okay, it says that the BRV is review is required when the administrative officer determines that the application cannot comply with the applicable building envelope standards, non-conformity standards, and parking standards. So maybe those are three areas to think about. Well, that's kind of like a variance then, so that would some be... Some of those are variance and some yeah. of that is appeal. Yeah. yeah. I am reading that... Um, Hyde Park, obviously they have zoning, but um, they have 10 cents per square foot as their fee. Um, I think that was just for residential, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so just, you know, maybe something we could use to think about our own. We should charge by the cubic foot and be different, right? How about we take into account the wall height? Height of all the sea level. <laughs> <laughs> all right, somebody. People okay. don't like my idea. Somebody's got to throw something Burlington, out there. Right, Burlington, 120. Um, Burlington's 122. Cents. So that would be like 140 dollars oh, for 100. Uh, 1400 square foot. Like so if we did 10 cents a square foot, if you were doing a sugar house, for example, it was. Say twelve by ten. Yeah, it'd be twelve dollars. It would be agriculturally exempted from it anyways. I like uh, it. That's true. But, yeah. Well, to, if you were doing a pot uh, growing facility, then because that's not agriculturally exempted. I do like the idea. Is is yeah. 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 Um, but high, so. okay, stop. So I like the ten cents. Yeah, ten cents per square foot. But twelve dollars for a permit for a ten by twelve building. Okay, so 25 cents. What are you, like, okay. 10 cents it is, though. <laughs> your ag... 12 bucks. If you're a 200 square foot, what does that mean? That'd be $500? It'd be $20. 200 square feet? I mean, I mean, cents? no, 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 sorry, I mean 2,000. No. 200, 14, 20,000. 
20. No, 2,000 square feet. It's all right. 200 bucks. 200, 200 bucks. bucks. Wait a minute. That's no, right no, where no. we started. Huh? That's right where we started. And it gets weird, right? Your average house comes right to what I said. Okay, let's do it. What a common denominator. It's, Tom, you're not allowed to take Evan's side. That is a rule. <laughs> With a base fee of two hundred bucks, I, mean, I think there's going to be. A so, so it, it, I'll meet. I'll meet in the middle. Foot. I'll meet in the middle. Ten cents per square foot. Minimum fee, uh, fifty dollars. Okay, something like that. Fine. I could. I could go with. Oh yeah, and that actually is Bradford has a minimum of a hundred dollars. So. Well, we can't let Bradford be better. Ooh, than us. Westfield has an additional one hundred and fifty dollars if a public hearing is required. Is that right. something that we want? I, think I want people to want to fix their places. That's my thing. Right, so I don't think we should add red tape that they have to go get a permit okay. for. I got you. Oh, wait, that's not what you were saying. <laughs> I was gonna, I mean, oh, no, I actually agree with you. Oh, my bad. Fixing your building is going to require a floor base because you're not going to change it. As long as you're not changing it. Depends on what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Right. Did you change a window on the Okay. Ready to move on? Is that I was on? ready to move on half an motion. hour. Motion. Motion to make the permit application fee ten cents per square foot, with a minimum application fee being fifty dollars, which is equi equal to a five hundred square foot building. <coughs> Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Do we also want to do an, an appeal? Or a variance fee. Well, the appeal appeal fee is built into the into ordinance. the ordinance. Oh, what? It's two hundred fifty dollars. We could double that. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't have a choice in that one. Okay. Um, so would that go for a variance too? Uh, I didn't say anything for a variance fee. Hold on a minute. Do we think that there'll be a variance request being made? It's possible. I mean, in, in a situation where it, it's the ordinance, if I remember what Beth said, they have to go to the DRB if the administrative officer determines it doesn't meet the requirements. Right, the AO pretty much just says, check if you meet the requirements. No, you're asking for a variance. Yeah. Do we even have an administrative officer for form based code right now? Yep, yeah, sure do. <laughs> Forgot Carl. I, I have Sorry. a sneaky feeling that's about to change. <laughs> Carl, how do you feel about staying on? <laughs> yeah. There's somebody that really wants to be the administrative officer for the form based code. I'll do it. I'll bet. I'll do one heck of a job, too. Okay, manager. I'm looking for the appeal. Can we just, can we just, I'll make a motion that appeals uh, are the same fee as. Variants are the same fee as. Uh, uh, Variants is the same fee as appeals. Yeah. Yes. I like it. Second. Second. No. Third. All those in favor? Me. Uh, okay. Cool. Okay. Next up, consider the appointment to the Green Mountain Byway Committee. Oh, this topic. I'm sorry, are we going back to the, the yeah. form based code thing? Do you want to ask the Planning Commission for a recommendation or a nomination for a new AO? And yes, this one's a good I like that idea. idea. And you want to see if they want to interview and do a background check on Thomas to make sure he's suitable. <laughs> Happy. Or maybe oh, they can't be it, right? Well, well he's still gullible. Let's not really abuse him until we're happy. <laughs> I, I kind of like porn based cards. I like the other one. hurts. I think I hear Thomas volunteering. Okay, next up is Pennsylvania mm -hmm. Mountain Byway. I think that it would be a good job for Randall. Yeah. The byway? Yeah. I think um, that. So they're looking for feedback first, right? For? 
Go ahead, the proper way. Nothing. What? And I would like filling Johnson's representation the destination points of interest. And installing signs. Don't we have a problem with sign pollution already? Who actually is putting on byways a function of e trans or is it strictly a non profit or my only experience with anything byway was with scenic byway and a portion of the road that was in very town ended up not getting included. Was it scenic? It wasn't scenic enough, I guess. <laughs> so they made that <laughs> determination, so my involvement stopped, so I don't know. But that was led by AOT and the Regional Planning Commission. Right, yeah. If this group, from what I've seen, it seems so far to be a number of municipal officials. I haven't seen the regional planning or the county planning commission being involved. But I believe it has to be connected with the state in some way, whether it's AOT or the travel and tourism office. Mm -hmm. Just to clarify, it is through Waterbury, Stowe, Morrisville, Hyde Park, Johnson and Cambridge, routes 100, 15A, I'm not sure about 15A is the next but whatever. 15A, Route 100C, Route 15, Route 108, and Smug Smuggler's Notch, Scenic Highway. So they basically, I'm not sure how Route 100's, I guess it is pretty in some spots. Route 100C and Route 15 apply to us very specifically. I would like to table this matter <sighs> until next Monday. Fully support. Until next Monday is not going to work. Next Monday will be two but, weeks. Well, we're next, next Monday. Monday, 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 Monday. Monday. Okay. You think you so? You know, what the possible twenties would be? Yeah, I mean, you've also asked a couple of questions. That, they apparently handed out signs. Do we have them? I've never seen them. Yeah. All right, so I asked Jason today to see if they were given to him. They actually put them up, and I've never noticed them. Maybe they were put up and have gone missing. He said he's never heard of these signs. So I don't know what happened, why Johnson didn't have them. We wouldn't put them up anyway, though. They'd be on state roads. No, they were, with the email, um, they noted that there was some guidance from the state about putting them up. Um, okay. Um, the lady who answered me um, noted to the other person on the email uh, list uh, uh, she says, I recall there were hanging guidelines provided by VTRANS. Do you recall them? And uh, I haven't received those guidelines yet. So if this is something that the state's doing statewide, they probably have something that says, well, if given communities involved in these scenic byways permission to put these signs up on in state road right-of-ways, if they're done, then this may happen which probably is the standard for hanging other signs. It's contributing to our sign pollution. And your, to your point, Beth, uh, you know, my, my assumption is most of these signs, if, if they're talking about the Studio Center, Dibden, and Tuesday Night Live, the basic signs for those probably would be on Route 15, which the town would not be well, placing those signs. In my travels coming from Hardwick, looks like maybe there's a sign placed near the town line on Route 15. So I'm wondering if in for Johnson you would have three signs, one at the top of the hill of 400 C, and one on 15 East and one on 15 West. And are they based 
you talking about the basic black signs? No, no these are no, no, they're small. They're these little are little like blue and green ones. Yeah. They're on Epson Minja. Speed limit size sign. And they are colorful and just have some kind of drawing um, on them. Like that's showing mountains up yeah. there. But again, we wouldn't have we wouldn't have placed those because they would all be on the right there. Well, from what I'm hearing, mm -hmm. what I'm, from this or from the emails, what I'm reading is that they were the expected the town to put them up. Except that can't. Except the state wouldn't allow us to put up a sign within the state well, right away. Right there's something with V Transit. V Transit is involved with it. Oh. Do you mind if it's there? I think we have that. I still move to table it until <laughs> next week. I know we keep tabling it. The woman's not super impressed with us, but... Well, I made a motion. So no one wants to second it. That's Wait, what's your did. motion? Okay. Table it. My motion was to table it until I next week. I to table it. Uh, okay. Okay. Do we need to vote on that, really? I don't think so. No? Okay, we're tabling it for the next okay. meeting. Fine. Can we actually, can we just publish some stuff about it, like asking for people of interest? We should probably just do that. I know some people that would be interested. Oh. I'd be more concerned that we don't have a current representative on the municipal TAC, and maybe Thomas, maybe we should appoint Thomas tonight. What is TAC? Transportation, Transportation Advisory Committee oh, okay. at the Omaha Family Planning Commission. That, that's something that... You know, we really should have representation on it. We need to get... I think we should stick okay. to the agenda. We do need to stick to the agenda. And will you send me a list of all the things you think we need appointees on? Because I have an appointee list that is not complete. I need to complete it with those kinds of things, too. That would be lovely. I was thinking about that this weekend. Any future agenda items need to go two weeks out. Yeah. Next week yeah. is strictly flood. The next week is in 10 weeks. It'd be a nice spot. It'd be nice to handle all of these appointments. So in the I know, I'm putting on the list so that we can do them all together. Yeah. In the interim, is your suggestion to post on Facebook with somebody that, to see if anybody's interested in being a member of the Green Mountain Byways? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Post to wherever we can, like all the normal channels, yeah. I might even tweet it. Okay. Exit? Or? Exit, yeah. Um, What's that? X. I don't know. The world has moved on past Evan. Exit, okay. Um, discuss municipal building flood repairs. So the, the building flooded. <laughs> I'd like to repair it. Discuss it. Um, but seriously, about like getting some sheetrock just in those bottom sections, I do think we should like just do that. that. That wall to walk everything off. So that it actually could be locked and the vault could be secured. Do we um, the other thing to think about, <clears throat> medium term, I guess, is you know it is early September. By mid to late October, we could see some freezing temps. Do we want to get like rock wool in the exterior walls? Dual purpose, but I hate the idea of paying for heat that goes right out. You know. I think everybody here would agree with that. Yeah, can we just buy it? Can the can the can we just, Jason just buy it? I was thinking Shane and I would go put it in Fine. on Sunday. I'll do it. Mark wants to be part of it. Not hurting. I've got, Could I've you got, supervise? I've got the saw. No, I can. I can. I'm a, a girl, but I can still work. Believe you said it or your not. back hurts. I was offering I you. Oh, I can supervise. Yeah, my back hurting. Yes. I think the whole select board could show up and do it one Sunday morning. I will screw in sheetrock, and I will mud if you need me to mud the sheetrock. Like, no, no, I just want insulation. Sure. Why, I want the insulation. Why would we do that when it can be FEMA reimbursed? Because it's really. Community, community center. So we don't have to wait for a whole RFP thing. Oh, um, like just the insulation. I wasn't talking about like big, big stuff. If we didn't get how high up did right they up. cut it? Have been two feet. Two feet. Yeah. Stop yeah. Up. So you get those rock walls. They're four feet. You cut them in half. Right. I can cut them in half, half as fast as you can stuff them in. Are right, the wiring going? Can we through? get like a big saw to do it with? Something like that. Is the wiring? 
Are you, yeah, you're, are are you serious about this? I just need to clarify. Can we cut him with a greater blade? He's actually serious about it because there's complaints about it, and we just need to not have complaints for it. Just needs to be done. So no, to this I place. agree that it needs to be done. Um, I, I want to know if I've been serious about all of us doing it. I'm down. Oh, I I'll just go with Mark. He's serious about doing it. Okay. He's I, not serious about everybody here doing it. Okay. I was serious. About it's it's kind of hard to, to tell place. sometimes with Evan. Um, I just so gotta, somebody's going to buy the materials. The I doubt that you guys are volunteering to buy the materials. So I, before we do that, yeah. I think we should find out whether or not we can be reimbursed for the materials, either through insurance or FEMA. Could we? <clears> yeah, <throat> yeah. Understood. Um, supportive. Like, it's just early. September and I said by mid October if we don't have it done. So Why now is a good time to have that conversation if we can get reimbursement just for the material. Reimbursed. We will be reimbursed. FEMA will reimburse us for this. Well, there is certain uh, steps. I'm not sure they would. Yeah, if we're doing something to kind of like hold over in the meantime until we can do the real work, I don't. I mean, that well, it's not actually stuff. about holding over. It's just about that you have to make sure that you prove that you've sought out comparable pricing and comparable vendors and blah, blah, blah. Like you have to follow the bureaucratic steps to get to the point where you'll be reimbursed for everything but, you do. But this is a good quick conversation because maybe, you know, somebody could talk to Ron um, and get an idea. And if Ron comes back and says, without a doubt, that is non-reimbursable unless you do an RFP for exterior wall insulation. And if we don't get anything back from that, we have two or three weeks for an RFP to be returned. And if we don't get anything back from that, maybe we could do this quickly and be reimbursed. So after reimbursement for the taxpayers, and no, I don't really want the select board to be in there doing it, but if it gets to that point in the year and it needs to happen, I think Mark and I and Beth can pull it off. I think, I think my insurance my insurance will cover, cover you working for me. Really? <laughs> Uh, Hopefully the pay is better than the select board pay. Um, we'll get a free cup of coffee. The, the thing that, have we decided on a long range plan with this I building? think we're talking about that Wednesday. Um, I have decided. So. What, have decided? what have you decided? <laughs> what have you decided? I've decided we go in there, we rock it, we sheet rock it, we move everybody that back downstairs, we put um, tile on the floor, those, whatever we want, it's flood proof. I would put rubber tiles down. The down. carpet tiles or the no. like a vinyl tile? Fire, like in the supermarket. Final square, one foot tile. Yeah, Sterling Unless, Market. Sterling Unless Market had planks. Vinyl uh, planks? Vinyl planks. Sure. I don't care. Just vinyl. Something put it that's down, easily torn off. Bring them downstairs. Breathe for a few minutes and think about what we're, whether we're going to put them upstairs. Or do some flood mitigation measures on the outside of the building to prevent right. the flood from getting well, in. Yeah. Or a combination. <clears throat> yeah. Right? It could be. But I, that, that seems to me. Well, that's why I was talking about easiest. short and long term options. So we want them back downstairs no matter what, anyways. Whether it's sooner or later, they're going to come back downstairs. If we're going to renovate upstairs. Well, no. Yeah, they have to be gone. Either. Then they have to be gone. Down. They have to be downstairs in order in order to be back up if that happens. In order yeah. to be back up, and if we don't want them back upstairs, let's leave them downstairs. So was the question for Ron about will FEMA reimburse if the town just goes out and buys the insulation material and has its own forces install it, or are you looking at a contractor to do that little bit of insulation work and, and nothing else for right now. I'm going to speak personally not as the select board right now. If we could get an RFP out there to get it, the exterior walls properly re-insulated and somebody returns that RFP, I think we should act on it. Both insulation and sheetrocking together? Yeah. Yes. yeah, insulation, moisture barrier, and sheetrock. The insulation should be rock wall. They should use moisture resistant sheetrock. Um, yeah. Those are the two. Yeah. And what, what about the outlets? Were those above where they cut, or are they? I don't know. Most of the outlets are pretty high. 
I know there were a couple of outlets in the floor, but I've been told that I, I think I guess we probably have to have those circuits checked, but yeah, I've been told we they were okay. Checked. And the thing is that there's that room by the bathroom also with all the electrical stuff. That stuff is pretty, like, those electrical unit things, I don't know what they are. They're pretty low. Whatever they are. They're not like, like, I feel like they're lower than the outlets. Can you no, talk about that utility room? Yes, I've been in that utility room hundreds of times. They're, they're not low. I went in there thinking, like, that stuff is low. No? Okay. What, what was your finger raised for mine? My finger was, I, I really like your idea, if we we're going to fool around with wiring, putting in waterproof wire, so that we, if that ever gets wet, we got I don't think we need to. The wiring is, I mean, the wiring is, most of the outlets are like that high on the wall. Okay. They're like if we don't have to rewire the different. outlets, that's even better, but if we do rewire, I, I, I think we rewire with waterproof wire. Dehumidifiers. Well, at one point they were plugged in from the second floor, not from the first floor. I don't know. I feel like power that has place. the power been turned mm -hmm. on for the first floor? Mm -hmm. Sir, pro well, I wasn't mm -hmm. I believe so. <coughs> down there, I think lights are on in the wall. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. We right. There's no cable. We asked, no extension cord. We oh, approved no contingent on the addresses being correct. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I've run the, the lights. So we have to do the ceiling lights. I don't know. Yeah. You just signed it tonight. So I totally agree with that. And uh, do we need to make a motion to? Uh, I know at one point in time. A number of meetings ago, we actually authorized Ron and Carl to develop an RFP to yep. make renovations downstairs. I don't know how many meetings ago it was, but I'm virtually certain we did, we did. do that. We, we said that the evidence... And yeah, and yeah. I was kind of just at a lost point on where we were and what was wanted. Yeah, and we didn't know what we right. wanted to do. Yeah. What outcome you wanted? Talk about the plan. Just that I, I would, the only thing I would say, I, I like what Mark said too about you know I don't I don't know that vinyl tiles are the right thing. I mean maybe vinyl planks. Well, I know you really went to that idea. If we have another flood, whatever it is, it's got to come up. Right. right. No. Yeah. That, yeah. That's all. Those, those vinyl planks just like pop yeah. right up. You don't have to take float. You don't even have to glue them down. If, if you seal that concrete like and glue those square them. tiles down, you can create a swimming pool. They rip, they rip them. Well, we had, was we, had, we had vinyl tiles in the hallway, in the entranceway, and they ripped them all up. I know, they didn't have to. Uh, they were worried about like they were worried about mold. the ridges yeah. between the glue. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Right? And I know you talked about um, but it's cheap enough that it can be being a very up. expensive alternative. I think it would be a lot of money. We could look into Polished it. concrete is like terrible on your back. Terrible on your well, back. Well, you, you don't need, you, you need, you need, if we put, if we put planks down, you'd want to have, you know, those rugs or walking rugs right. or something those like that. Those planks come with a cushion underneath the Planks are not, yeah, they don't hurt you. They're very they're nice. Not, yeah, they're, they're not. Where do you get the price compared to my vinyl tile? I think. Well, your final spell is probably a mark, sorry. So, that. I guess, like, the, the, the big, the, the big RFP from where I'm sitting from still needs to wait until we meet with the village so that right. we can get a concept. Both boards want to do X in the short term, and that could just be sheer off insulation on the exterior walls. In the medium term, they want to get the downstairs rebuilt and get the office staff back downstairs in the long term. Can still remain to be seen, but I kind of feel like I can develop whatever you want with Ron and Carl and Tom's, do do? but if it's not going to buy in from the village, why waste everybody? So, would your suggestion be the a multi, multiple stage RFP? The first one being rock, wall, and sheet rock? And I think that's realistic forms? to get done quickly, yeah. unfortunately. I'm supportive, yeah. And, and we can show that to the village on Wednesday. Right. This is the RFP that we're going to send out. I, yeah, I don't even think we have to run RFPs by them. I think they'll be respectful. Um, I just think that both boards need to have concept of this is what we want to do. You know, if the village could come back and say, 
that they don't want their employees ever to move back downstairs, that would kind of change how we attack stuff, I guess. And make it about impossible to do everything properly, but I just want to make sure they're heard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Um, it does. So are you suggesting that we take an action tonight contingent on trustee review and approval? Or? No. I think we need to make sure that we hear from Rose. We need to talk to Rose. Somebody needs to talk to Rosemary or Sue. It doesn't matter, either one, because they are the ones who are responsible for the office, ultimately. And we need to make sure that they are supportive of at least phase one. I would say medium and long term. I don't even think they need to be supportive of short term insulation and sheet. No, 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 they don't need to. I agree. They do That's like to, phase they one. They do three. need to for medium, though. First, they did need to for medium. Yes, definitely. Well, I agree that we should get their input. I don't know that we should agree with every everything that might be on their wish list. The building is the responsibility of the select board. The op the running of the office is the responsibility of the clerk. But there's a difference between the building that you provide and the running of the office. Right. I hear you. But I still think we should talk I, I'm not disagreeing. I'm just saying that I, I, get your I point. don't necessarily, if they say they want carpet down there again, I'm going to have a hard work on that. Doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. What about like a gold plate in the mirror? That could be an issue too. It's not flat okay. <laughs> Um, see, this is exactly what I'm talking about, Tom, by the way. Perfect example. Uh, okay, I think so we're all on the same page, are we? We are. You understand? You're good, Mark. All right, feasible. Gold blade mirror, yep. Next, next item. <laughs> Discuss the use of ARPA funds adding to the budget. Okay, so a whole bunch of people have been, like, I feel like we've talked about adding ARPA funds to our budget and are informed enough, and Duncan went the extra mile and reached out to VL, uh, VCLT, um, VLCT. No. I really don't like their acronym. I can never say Vermont it. Vermont League of Cities to, and Towns. I have to say it in my head to get the acronym right. Um, yeah, the league, um, to just verify that we can bring the ARPA funds into our budget and we can use surplus to seed into um, reserve funds after a, the year ends. So do we feel like we're in a position where somebody wants to motion that we use remaining ARPA funds or a sub specific amount of ARPA funds? What's ARPA again? Motion? I'll make a motion to apply the ARPA funds to in whole or in all, part? Yeah, you can't apply all of them. Why not? The unallocated ARPA funds. Well, yeah. Yeah, the unallocated. The unallocated. we have already allocated plus 100,000. 50, 50 and 45? Yeah, 45, yeah. Right. 50 for the um, internet. Which, yeah. by the way, they got their grant tonight. Yeah. They did get it. Yep. Oh, nice. Okay. The good news is they're going to contract with a company that's already here. No, it's a different. I mean, it is the same company, company but back to the anyway, like stop it. Yeah. Forty-five thousand, or no, the around that industrial to the engineering study. Yeah, Mumley. Mumley. Like the redesign. But the the grant that we and got from Northern match. Borders, yeah. that that was what was it? Three fifty of the ARPA funds, or no, it was more than that. Give me Harper. Mm -hmm. Was it? I, I voted against it. What I, I honestly don't remember. I'm looking yeah. it up. I don't remember three hundred thousand dollars. I don't remember it either because we I were very focused on the content, <laughs> other than the numbers in that letter. I thought the remaining ARPA funds were going to go to like to light industrial. Most of the remaining ARPA funds are, are put. Well, it depends on whether we get an EDA grant. If we get an EDA grant, we're going we're going from fifty percent. Match to eighty percent. So well, I still big. support your motion wherever we are. When was it in June? That's when we applied for that. That that be, be yes. the bank, whatever. We'll do the bookkeeping work to make it. Yeah, I, I don't think it really matters. I mean, my my motion would be, and people can second it or not, would be to spend 
the unallocated ARPA funds on our current fiscal year budget according to the appropriate categories. Um, so, yeah, you know, within and I'm, budget. I'll second that because we don't want to find ourselves up against the deadline with ARPA money not spent when it's so easy to do. Okay, so we have, a, we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Is your motion contingent upon, well, I guess it, can it be contingent upon earmarking the surplus that it generates in our budget? It needs to go to a reserve fund for uh, current and future what is it? Current and future. But, but the yeah, I don't want to make no, no, money after the budget. Contingent on, on now, this is different. That would be for the warning of town meeting. I yeah. I, 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 my motion would be very simple. It would be to apply the ARPA funds to the current fiscal year budget. And then when we end up with a surplus and we know what it is, then we can make a decision as to what we want to propose to allocate it or earmark it to. Wicked. I don't. I don't think we should make a motion that is contingent on it going. We're just going to create a surplus. The voters will decide what to do with it. So we have a ultimately um, allocation of five hundred seventeen thousand one hundred sixty-seven dollars and twenty-five cents of our fund allocation toward northern border borders match, except that. Oh yeah. Why did I think it was three something? I don't know. I don't know why you think anything. <laughs> oh, that might have been an early. I mean, Brian originally was thinking we'd make an application for, for five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, his original letter to us was uh, low, and we said, "Why are you? Why is this so low?" Kind of thing. So that. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's have it. Uh, no other uh, executive so session. We, oh, we do have an executive session need. Yes? We have one besides what we already went in for? Yes. Okay. No. So can we can we ask um, Tom and or Carl to work with Rosemary to implement this idea of assigning the ARPA funds to yep. the to the regular budget, categories. operating budget. Yes. Yeah. Can I reach out to Katie Buckley for the specifics? Yep, sure. Thank you. you can reach out to Katie Buckley sure. I any think, time you want. Did I CC you, you on the email chain? That it's I don't have the email yet. We haven't given you a email yet? Did I get it? You can have my This is This is Katie Buckley's email chain. Do you have it? Yeah. yeah. I thought I had one. I'm familiar with the concept from speaking with her, but it'd be nice to have some of my job is resetting people's email yeah. passwords. If memory serves, she was originally saying payroll would be the simplest way. I think payroll and benefits, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, so executive session, we have one more just to go into it. It won't take long, um, but it is on an employee review. So, can somebody, that's three, one, that's a three. If somebody would like to make a motion. Um, Are you sure? Yeah, it's a three. A three. I'm positive. I would move we enter executive session for the purpose of discussing employee review as per one VSA three one three eight. Can I add to that? Just uh, just bringing bringing everybody up to speed on. Our community economic development specialist, which will be about a 10 second discussion. In, in the executive session, you want to do that? I think it's appropriate to do it in executive session because of confidentiality issues. Okay, yep. Well, I'll three, second as long as it's only 10 seconds, Duncan. A3 does hold to 10. <laughs> if it's full. Okay, so we have a motion and we have a second I'll by Shane. I'll go home. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Guys, have it. Okay, let's go get this over with quickly. <laughs>
Sure. I will make a motion to provide $800 in bonus compensation to Lydia Putvain for her hard work uh, through the months after the flooding. Well, after the interim. Uh, sorry, after Carl came on board. Thank you. Okay, I'll second. A motion and a second. Uh, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, so if I was saying aye. 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 Have it. Uh, all right, is there any other business? Sure, if not, that. meeting adjourned at 940. Sure, I have some money. Thanks for correcting. Yeah, all right. Well, not bad. Uh